Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Shadi Aqil. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander, received Al Safriya Palace today. The Commander in Chief of the Bahrain Defense Force, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, and the Commander of the Royal Guard, His Highness Brigadier Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and a number of senior BDF officers, as well as members of the Royal Guard, on the occasion of their return from Yemen after performing their duty. The guest congratulated His Majesty on the advent of the holy month of Ramadan, wishing him many happy returns and to the people of Bahrain further prosperity. His Majesty the King hailed the BDF officers' efforts expressing pride in all BDF affiliates. During the meeting, His Majesty the King granted a number of Royal Guard officers the Military Bravery Medal, which is a military honor. They are Hamid Jassim Hamid al Dirri, Corporal Ibrahim Khalil al Jazaf, and Khalid Muhammad Ali al Yafi'i in recognition of their courage during the performance of their duty in Yemen. His Majesty the King expressed appreciation and pride in the participation of the members of the Defense Force, along with their brothers and the Arab Coalition Forces and the Restoring Hope Operation, which is led by Saudi Arabia in support of Yemen's legitimacy. His Majesty the King requested the BDF senior officers to convey his greetings and good wishes to all members of the BDF inside and outside the country, wishing everyone good luck and success. Based on the insistence of the state of Qatar to continue to undermine the security and stability of the Kingdom of Bahrain and to interfere in its domestic affairs, as well as on the escalation and incitement of its media and its support to acts of terror and to financing armed groups associated with Iran to carry out subversive attacks and spread chaos in the Kingdom in flagrant violation of all agreements, covenants and principles of international law without any regard to values, laws, morals, or consideration of the principles of good neighborliness, or pledge to the premises of Gulf relations and the denial of previous commitments. The Kingdom of Bahrain announced the severing of its diplomatic relations with the state of Qatar in order to preserve its national security. Bahrain is also withdrawing its diplomatic mission from Doha and giving all members of the Qatari diplomatic mission 48 hours to leave the kingdom and the completion of the necessary procedures. Bahrain is also closing its airspace, ports and territorial waters to air traffic and shipping to and from Qatar within 24 hours of the announcement of the statement. The government of the Kingdom of Bahrain is banning its citizens from traveling to Qatar or staying there. It regrets that Qatari citizens are not allowed to enter or transit through Bahrain. Qatari residents and visitors are therefore given 14 days to leave the kingdom in order to avoid any hostile attempts or activities that may exploit the situation despite pride and confidence in the brethren among the Qatari people and their love for their second country. The dangerous Qatari practices have not been confined to the Kingdom of Bahrain, but have also been extended to brotherly countries that have been informed that such acts reflect a very dangerous pattern which cannot be ignored or accepted and must be addressed with full strength and firmness. While the Kingdom of Bahrain regrets this decision taken to protect its security and maintain its stability, it affirms its keenness on the brotherly people of Qatar who are aware of its suffering, as they witness with each act of terror the fall of casualties among their brothers and sisters in Bahrain because their government continues to support terrorism at all levels and to attempt to bring down the legitimate regime in Bahrain. Meanwhile, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Egypt, Libya and the Maldives severed their ties with Qatar, accusing it of supporting terrorism. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia cut its diplomatic ties with Qatar, emanating from exercising its sovereign rights guaranteed by the international law and protecting its national security from the dangers of terrorism and extremism. The Saudi press agency, the SPA, reported today that the government of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has decided to sever diplomatic and consular relations with the state of Qatar, close all land, sea and airports, prevent crossing into Saudi territories, airspace and territorial waters and start immediate legal procedures for understanding with fraternal and friendly countries and international companies to implement the same procedures as soon as possible for all means of transport to and from the state of Qatar for reasons relating to Saudi national security, according to an official source. The United Arab Emirates also severed its ties with Qatar and has given Qatar's diplomatic mission in Abu Dhabi 48 hours to leave the country after what it said were Doha's several policies which destabilizes the security and stability of the region and manipulates commitments. UAE informed Qatari citizens they had 14 days to leave the UAE. 
Citizens from Qatar have also been banned from passing through the UAE. Emiratis are now banned from visiting or even passing by Qatar at all means. The UAE affirmed its complete commitment and support to the Gulf Cooperation Council and to the security and stability of the GCC states. The UAE is taking these decisive measures as a result of the Qatari authorities' failure to abide by the Riyadh Agreement on returning GCC diplomats to Doha in its complementary arrangement in 2014, and Qatar's continued support for funding and hosting of terror groups, primarily the Islamic Brotherhood, and its sustained endeavors to promote the ideologies of Daesh and Al-Qaeda across the direct and indirect media, in addition to Qatar's violation of the statement issued at the U.S. Islamic Summit in Riyadh on May 21, 2017, on countering terrorism in the region and considering Iran a state sponsor of terrorism. The UAE measures are taken as well as based on Qatari authorities' hosting of terrorist elements. and meddling in the affairs of other countries, as well as their support of terror groups' policies which are likely to push the region into a stage of unpredictable consequences. While regarding the policies taken by the state of Qatar that sow seeds of sedition and discord among the region's countries, the UAE affirms its full respect and appreciation for the brotherly Qatari people on account of the profound historical, religious, and fraternal ties and kin relations binding UAE and Qatari people. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman on Khalifa chaired al Ghadabiya Palace today, the weekly cabinet meeting. The Prime Minister commended the humanitarian and noble goals of the Isa Award for Service to Humanity with the care of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa on Khalifa, saying that the award has an international respect that reinforced Bahrain's role in spreading the culture of humanitarian work and shedding light on the bright models in this regard. He said the award has immortalized the name of the late ruler, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman al Khalifa, who will always be remembered for his effective contributions to serving humanity. In this regard, His Royal Highness congratulated the winner of the third session of the award 2015 to 2017, which is the Egyptian Children's Cancer Hospital Foundation. He also commended the efforts of the Board of Trustees of the award, chaired by the Deputy Premier Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak al Khalifa and the members of the awards jury. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister then reviewed the results of his meeting with the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sabah, during a brotherly visit to the state of Kuwait recently. The cabinet commended the depth of Bahraini Kuwaiti historic relations and the importance of the visit in promoting joint cooperation and supporting the development of the Gulf Cooperation Council. In a relevant matter, the cabinet welcomed electing Kuwait as a non permanent member of the Security Council, which comes in line with the leading role of Kuwait, led by His Highness the Emir and its international diplomacy, which qualified it for the post. The Cabinet affirmed that the accomplishment will contribute in serving the issues of the region and reinforcing its security and stability. On a separate note, the Cabinet said the decisions that have been taken by the Kingdom of Bahrain, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the Arab Republic of Egypt, in addition to several brotherly countries to sever ties with Qatar, are inevitable decisions. The meeting said the decisions reflect the unified stance of these countries to promote security and maintain stability and preserve sovereignty, as well as to ward off any threats and protect the people. The cabinet directed all ministries and concerned government bodies to take necessary actions to implement the decisions related to severing ties with the state of Qatar. In regards to other issues on the meeting's agenda, his Royal Highness the Prime Minister directed the Minister of Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning and the Minister of Housing to visit the village of Duraz and neighboring villages to inspect their services and facility requirements by directly meeting with the citizens and listening to their needs. His Royal Highness directed to open vital traffic intersections in the capital following completion of development projects and directed the Ministry of Interior and the Ministry of Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning to follow up on the matter. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister congratulated the students who passed the general certificate and wished them continued success. He commended the efforts of the education staff of teachers and administrators. The Minister of Education meanwhile said that the results have reflected the high success rates in the secondary stage. In regards to citizens' observations, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister urged to avoid any power or water cuts 
and directed the Minister of Electricity and Water to present a report on the power cut cases in some areas such as Hamilton, outlining the reasons that caused them and the steps that have been taken by the ministry to avoid them. His Royal Highness directed for a memorandum to be presented from the Minister of Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning regard, rather regarding shrimp fishermen that includes options to keep their income during the fishing ban without violating the government's efforts to preserve wildlife. The cabinet commended the efforts of security forces in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and their efficiency in foiling a terrorist attack represented in a booby-trapped car on the King Abdulaziz Road in Khatif. The meeting noted the efforts in combating terrorism and dealing with outlaws, in addition to thwarting plans aimed to destabilize Saudi Arabia. The meeting reiterated Bahrain's full solidarity with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in combating terrorism and its full support to all its measures aiming to preserve security and stability. The cabinet meeting also condemned the terrorist attacks that took place in the British capital London, which targeted innocent people. The meeting confirmed Bahrain's support to the United Kingdom against terrorism and has expressed condolences to the families of the victims of the attack. The Cabinet approved the basis of the state budget estimates for the fiscal years 2017 to 2018 and fiscal policies, as well as the estimates of general oil and non-oil revenues, expenditures, and expected deficit. In this regard, the Cabinet entrusted the Ministerial Committee for Financial Affairs and the rationalization of spending to proceed with the preparation of the draft general budget law of the state in preparation for its transfer to the legislative authority. The Cabinet discussed a memorandum submitted by the Ministry of Cabinet Affairs regarding the renewal of the agreement to establish the Arab Regional Center for World Heritage and decided to refer the memorandum to the Ministerial Committee for Legal Affairs and Ministerial Committee for Financial Affairs and the rationalization of spending. The Cabinet approved a draft law aimed to amend the law of proceedings rather before the Sharia courts prepared in the light of the proposed law submitted by the Representatives Council. The amendment aims to reduce the duration of the cancellation of the case and it dismissing it if it passed 60 days instead of the six months period in the current law so that the law of legal procedures is consistent with the law of pleadings. The cabinet also approved based on recommendation from the ministerial committee for legal affairs two proposals submitted by the representatives council regarding the establishment of a pedestrian bridge near the al Hidayah al-Khalifiya school and the second regarding the establishment of a rainwater drainage department. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa visited yesterday the Majlis of His Highness Sheikh Ibrahim bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Majlis of Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Dhahrani and the Majlis of Abdullah bin Hamad Al Naimi. His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa accompanied His Royal Highness during the visits. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince highlighted that the core purpose of the Kingdom's Development Program is to further improve citizens' living standards and that His Majesty, rather His Majesty the King continues to stress the importance of placing the interests of Bahrain citizens at the heart of all strategies and initiatives. The Crown Prince noted that the fiscal challenges faced by all oil exporting nations will be overcome in Bahrain through sustainable fiscal policies and initiatives which strengthen public and private sector collaboration and benefit all. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince spoke of last year's government forum which set out key tools that would help Bahrain deliver its development goals and further improve citizens' living standards. His Royal Highness emphasized that the main goals include strengthening efforts to redefine the role of the public sector from the primary engine, rather engine of economic growth into a private sector enabler and regulator, facilitating innovation and increasing competitiveness while continu continuing to invest in citizens. His Royal Highness also added that enhancing public services and legislative frameworks to strengthen Bahrain's international competitiveness, as well as the simplification of government procedures, are among the most important tools needed to translate development goals into tangible results that directly benefit Bahrain citizens. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince stressed that he is confident in Bahrain's ability to deliver those targets should it continue to follow the guiding principles of the Economic Vision 2030, sustainability, competitiveness and fairness. His Royal Highness confirmed that as part of its commitment to maintaining a diversified, sustainable national economy, the Kingdom will continue to pursue policies aimed at enhancing the role of the private sector 
and increasing investment opportunities within an economic environment based on creativity and innovation. His Royal Highness emphasized that only through the combined efforts of both the public and private sectors will the kingdom be in a position to sustain a strong economy in the face of global economic challenges. The Majlis hosts and guests expressed their gratitude for the visit and highlighted His Royal Highness the Crown Prince's commitment to advancing the kingdom's sustainable development and delivering opportunities for the people of Bahrain.
The commander of the Royal Guard, Brigadier General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received participants of the BDF Special Duty Force as part of the Arab Coalition Forces Operation Restore Hope in Yemen. His Highness Sheikh Nasser welcomed the BDF Special Duty Force participants, expressing gratitude and appreciation of their loyal efforts in the performance of their national duty within the Arab Coalition Forces in support of the legitimacy in Yemen led by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Senior BDF officers and relatives of the BDF Special Duty Force participants also attended the reception. The Deputy Prime Minister, the Board of Trustees Chairman of the Isa Award for Service to Humanity, Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, hosted in the presence of the Deputy Premier, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, an iftar banquet at the Bahrain National Theatre in honor of the Board of Trustees Chairman of Egypt's Children's Cancer Hospital, which won the third edition of the award. Dr. Amr Azad Salama, his accompanying delegation, members of the award Board of Trustees, and the jury. The iftar banquet was attended by the Egyptian ambassador to Bahrain, Suha Ibrahim Rafat Al Far. The Deputy Premier and Head of the Ministerial Committee for Financial Affairs and the Rationalization of Spending, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, patronized the ceremony of the Health Insurance Review and Assessment Services, the HIRA, in celebration of the start of the project, which is implemented for the Supreme Council of Health in regards to the information systems related to the health insurance system. The Deputy Premier stated that adapting IT systems to serve health, clinical and administrative and financial health ins insurance is only a step towards implementing the project in line with best practices. He also asserted that in line with the leadership's directives, the National Health Plan 2016 to 2025, which is considered one of the important national initiatives, aims to build a health system based on quality and sustainability. During the ceremony, the President of the Supreme Council of Health, Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, delivered a speech in which he stressed that the health information system is the backbone of the health insurance program. For his part, the South Korean National Assembly Health and Social Affairs Steering Committee Chairman Seung Jo Young expressed pleasure in HIRA's execution of the project in partnership with the Supreme Council of Health in Bahrain to provide high-quality medical services for all. He also expressed hope for the project to strengthen bilateral relations between Bahrain and Korea. The President of the Health Insurance Review and Assessment, Son Myung Sai, stated that HIRA has took it upon itself to understand Bahrain's culture on the social and health structures. He asserted that the implementation of their wide range of expertise, which spans for more than 40 years in the healthcare field in South Korea, in order to design effective health information managed by the best electronic system with the least possible errors. The Deputy Prime Minister, His Excellency Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, patronized the inauguration ceremony of the Sahati IT project on Sunday evening, a collaborative venture between the government of Bahrain and the government of South Korea to set up the information system infrastructure for the proposed social health insurance system known as Sahati in Bahrain. One important uh, element in Sahati is the IT, and the IT, which we are actually have an agreement between uh, Bahrain, uh, SCH, and uh, HERA in uh, Korea actually to establish a very sophisticated kind of s system of IT which is going to be the main pillar for the uh, ISAHA. Actually it depends, it uh, actually is formed of four uh, components. One of them is the uh, National Economic Medical Record which we are going to do it with the little bit of help with the Koreans and then the National Health Information uh, System, Insurance Information System which actually all the financial uh, transactions are going to be through it and that's actually controlling all the financial aspects uh, on, on health in Bahrain. The venture will lay the groundwork to establish a unified and integrated health system in the kingdom that will connect all public and private health providers. It will also set the framework for the management of insurance claims. We 
are, as Bahrain and Korean government, love to work together to uh, achieve universal health coverage for people of Bahrain as well as the citizens of Korea, because the government would like to provide a good health care service with affordable price and uh, anytime, anywhere. This is what goal we would like to achieve, and we will use IT system that will effectively, efficiently employed throughout the system. Uh, actually, uh, we've signed in March uh, 2017 with the Korean government to implement uh, a health information system actually on a national scale, mainly will be concerned with uh, claims management and drug management, plus will be a reporting system which will give the uh, executive management of Bahrain enabling them to take decisions uh, based on information and knowledge. A high-level Korean delegation is in Bahrain to kickstart the implementation of the MOU signed in Seoul in March to develop the Sahati IT system. Officials believe this visit is a gateway for further cooperation in the field of health and others in the wider region. Tonight, Bahrain inaugurates a key pillar towards achieving national social health insurance, a unified health information system that will work for accountable, sustainable and high-quality health care. Mohamed Shaban, Bahrain International News.